Kathleen Kelly Reardon, Comebacks at Work, Using Conversation to Master Confrontation. Welcome to the summary of e-comebacks at work, using conversation to master confrontation by Kathleen Kelly Reardon. This book demonstrates the art of crafting the perfect comeback in various professional contexts and dealing with toxic individuals. Sharpen your communication skills as you learn various tactics to engage with spoilers, critics, blamers, puppeteers, and complainers. Navigate through communication ruts, unwanted repetitive episodes, personal questions, and swift judgments as you uncover methods to break free from your inherent patterns and enhance your response. Discover the power of metaphors, the AR techniques, and understanding the context of any situation to deliver meaningful retorts with precision and grace. Handling Difficult People Learn how to handle different types of difficult people by responding cleverly and taking control of the situation. Are you struggling to come up with the right words when faced with difficult people? Whether it's a critic, a blamer, a puppeteer, or even someone who always complains, there's always a clever way to respond. When dealing with someone you want to frustrate by showing your superiority, try agreeing with them, using their comments against them, or responding sarcastically. Accepting an insult as something positive is also a great way to defuse it. Like American painter Norman Rockwell, you can unexpectedly find merit in the criticism to turn the insult into a compliment. When dealing with a blamer, avoid attacking and instead turn things around. Note that fixing the problem is more important than placing blame. If you encounter a puppeteer who manipulates others, turn the whole issue over to them. Make them untangle the barriers they've erected. This approach helps in avoiding extra work and taking control of the situation. When dealing with a complainer, suggest the thought-stopping method. Replace each negative thought with a positive one, or simply allow yourself to complain for only a limited time each day. This tactic helps break the habit of complaining. Lastly, avoid the, it can't be done, type of people. When faced with an unhelpful customer service rep, hang up and redial. Solve your issue with someone else. In conclusion, knowing how to handle different types of difficult people is essential in life. Respond cleverly and take control of the situation to defuse a potentially sticky situation. Overcoming Communication Obstacles Harvard professor Chris Argyris explains how our past experiences create master programs that may not always work in tough situations. In his article, Good Communication That Blocks Learning, he offers examples of four common communication obstacles and how to overcome them. Argyris explains that people often rely on learned responses when faced with challenging situations. However, these responses may not always be effective. According to Argyris, there are four common communication obstacles that people face. The first is, communication ruts, where people become stuck in a particular way of communicating. Argyris advises people to try to break out of these patterns by asking questions and genuinely listening to the responses. By doing so, people can become more open to new ideas and perspectives. The second obstacle is, unwanted repetitive episodes, where people fall into the same dysfunctional patterns. Argyris suggests not being predictable and avoiding responding in the same way every time. Instead, he advises confronting the issue and communicating how the behavior made you feel. The third obstacle is unwillingly divulging personal information. Argyris suggests that oversharing personal information can damage your professional reputation. He offers tips for redirecting the conversation, such as politely declining to answer the question or changing the topic. The final obstacle is jumping to judgment, where people respond too quickly or defensively. Argyris advises taking a moment to think and reflect. He suggests asking questions for clarification and taking the time to understand the situation fully. Overall, Argyris argues that by recognizing and overcoming these obstacles, individuals can improve their communication skills and become more effective communicators. Overcoming Freeze in Challenging Situations Discover how to overcome your hesitations and quicken your comebacks. 
UCLA psychologists found that social pain sensitivity is related to a gene associated with physical pain. If recalling a social rejection feels vivid and evokes past exclusions, you may have a rare variant of muopioid receptor gene. Analytical people may experience comeback brain freeze from overthinking. To improve, explore the source of hesitation and practice a mental preparedness technique called if-then planning. The power of metaphors. The use of metaphors can disarm anyone. Crafting your own or expanding on an existing one can provide you with a memorable comeback. Such as responding to an insult by calling yourself a babe in the woods and retorting with, I thought out of the mouths of babes come words of wisdom. It is also important to memorize a few comebacks to buy time while you think, such as, I'm going to step over here and pretend this didn't happen. Care to join me? or, there are times when silence is the only option. This is one of them. The key is to use metaphors with the right tone, smile, or inflection. Our techniques for constructive responses. The book suggests using, our techniques, to craft effective replies in challenging situations. These techniques include, reframe, to adopt a different perspective, rephrase, to offer better wording, and rejoin, to disarm offenders by agreeing. Other techniques are, revisit, restate, request, rebalance, reorganize, rebuke, and retaliate. The goal is to respond constructively while avoiding unnecessary conflicts. The book emphasizes the importance of using both logic and emotion to decide what to say or do in a situation. The reader should also use comebacks that give people pause if an insulting person threatens their credibility or makes an unacceptable statement. However, the book reminds readers not to get pulled into unnecessary conflicts and to keep their goals in mind. Strategic Comebacks When faced with insults, it is essential to strategically plan your responses. Save your strongest retorts for the most powerful provocations. However, sometimes staying silent or giving the speaker a chance to rephrase their comments can be more beneficial in the long run. By standing up for yourself, you let others know that they cannot take advantage of you. But, it is still important to remain in your comfort zone. Remember, knowing how to respond doesn't always mean you have to. The Art of Shooting a Great Comeback Shooting off a great comeback relies on gut instinct, observation of non-verbal cues, and past interactions. To improve in this area, assess your skills, diagnose weaknesses, and adjust your comebacks to fit your goals and context. Understanding the other person is crucial, so pulse them to determine their receptivity to your comments. Remember, they are also pulsing you, so correct any stereotypes or labels they may rely on. And don't forget, Sometimes it's best to graciously give in if the other party has no room to move. Choose the right comeback. Learn how to choose the perfect response with these 10 questions. In any situation where we are being attacked or criticized, it can be challenging to come up with the right response. This book offers guidance on how to choose the right comeback using a set of 10 questions. First, consider how important the relationship is to you. If it's crucial, Choose a response that will not harm the relationship or your coworker's ego. Second, evaluate if the negative behavior towards you was intentional or not. Respond primarily to intentional insults and save your energy for them. Third, ask yourself if you contributed in some way or if the problem is entirely the other person's fault. Instant dislike towards you may indicate you have provoked it in some way, so evaluate your approach. Fourth, Ask if your credibility or anything valuable to you is on the line. If so, respond to the attack equally while saving the relationship if possible. Fifth, consider if the person attacking you did enough damage to himself. Sometimes it is best to say nothing in response and let the attacker damage their reputation. Sixth, avoid making the problem personal by not using I or me in your comeback. Instead, Focus on your observations. Seventh, don't be predictable, doing something unexpected can make a significant impact. Eighth, listen to your gut instinct and watch the other person's body language. Pause if they misunderstand your response.
practice with a mirror and ask for feedback from trusted friends. Ninth, make sure you're skilled enough to deliver a zinger before using one, start with smaller battles to develop your confidence. Finally, assess the situation and decide if responding will worsen your problems. If so, breathe and remove yourself from the situation to calm down before deciding how to respond. With these 10 questions, you can develop the skill of choosing the perfect comeback in any situation without resorting to harmful words. In conclusion, Comebacks at Work enlightens you on skillfully using conversations to create advantageous outcomes, even in the most acrimonious exchanges. Ensure that your ultimate goal is always in sight and appreciate the importance of context in responding to provocative scenarios, steer clear of unnecessary conflict and acknowledge your own role in potential issues. Adopt diverse tactics and base your choice of comeback on your priorities, as well as your relationship with the other party. Do not underestimate the impact of nonverbal cues and rely on your instincts to craft the perfect zinger when the situation demands it. Ultimately, effective communication strengthens your professional relationships and enables you to navigate the workplace battleground with finesse.